your alternative talk radio contact, the planet, KGRARadio.com. With infinite complacency, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, thinning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Welcome to another episode of Into the Fray, leering at you from the woodline. Visit the mothership at intothefrayradio.com. There you can find all the episodes, the blog post, ITF gear, and sign up for the free guest newsletter. The weekly show is, of course, always free and available in all podcatchers, but if you'd like to support the show, and why wouldn't you, go to the website and click Become an Insider which in turn gets you extra content each and every month. And by the way, if you would be so kind as to leave a rating and review in your listening platform of choice, Cosmic Karma shall be yours. Be part of the discussion by joining the interactive ITF Facebook group. Follow on Twitter at ITF underscore radio and Instagram. If you have an experience that you'd like to share, email Shannon at IntoTheFrayRadio.com or call the hotline anytime at 844-866-3366. Thanks so much for listening. Now, if you would be so kind, buckle up your safety belts. Put that tray table in the upright position. Liftoff is upon us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we have Seattle, Washington, and Massachusetts now in the house. Who are we speaking to now? So Seattle is Brian. Hello. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Hello. Hey, what's up? And Massachusetts, Mary. I'm, I'm actually I'm actually in Phoenix, but it's a it's a Seattle. Oh, number. that's right. Yes. Uh, Mary, you know, Hi, Mary. We, yeah. we, we keep trying to cover this and I didn't, I don't recognize you right off the bat. Neither does anyone else. Cause there's no heavy breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I keep seeing the little meme of Come that on. huge cat Women. with all the rolls. <laughs> I'm like, that's Come on, this is adult radio. That's the picture. <laughs> no. It is. I don't know. No. People listen to ITF. They're like, Oh no. God, she's off her freaking I- rocker. I dropped the ball again. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's all right. Welcome to the club. So, so Shannon, are you writing notes as to who's where? I am. Now, how were you able to see my like uh, the the God board wherever? Because you call you're using your computer because to I listen. Have Uber, right. Because you what? Right. Okay. Well, I'm I mean I've called you through the app. Oh. So when you call through the app, you everything comes at up the same as to time. what you right. see. I see too. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Right. Got you. No, sure thank you guys. I apologize for putting this off till today. I know that that kind of kicked off some people, but then it added some others. So I guess it's just the way it worked out. But thank you. And I'm sorry at the same time. So thanks for being here. I wanted to kick this off and right out of the gate because, you know, we've only got the hour. So just about, I don't know, an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, Jonathan posted in the end of the fray group something that maybe it's not that shocking, but it, it's at least like worth a mention. I want to see what you guys thought. I kind of know what you're going to say already, but supposedly Todd Standing has his quote unquote actors that want out of their non-disclosure agreement so that basically everything is going to come out and the fact that it was in fact uh, from what I read a massive Mm -hmm. Canadian bodybuilder in makeup and costume and that's mm-hmm. what he has been filming. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't know if you guys had seen that. I haven't seen the entire 
thread. I don't know exactly who's behind uh, this article that Jonathan is posting about something called Bigfoot Truth Be Told channel on YouTube or something. But what do you guys uh, think of this quote unquote news? Maybe it's not so newsy, but um, yeah, what, what are you guys thoughts on this? There was well, an article became, at yeah on the on. singular fourteen, an article on the singular fourteen that was taken down. Oh really? And this is yeah, a, it was a, up uh, four days ago. Oh, the singular fourteen, and it, okay, so it was up four days ago, kind of exposing him, and did Todd throw a fit, and then they took it down, or they just took it down themselves? I. I have no clue. Yeah, I have no clue. I just, because when I saw the article, I think in the Facebook group, I just tonight, I did a search on it. And the mm. only thing that came up was uh, th- this link, but it was, you had to go to the archive uh, site on Google oh. to see it. So they've already taken it down. Do you know who's behind the singular 14? Yeah, that's uh, Tobias mm-hmm. and Emily. They're, they're pretty good people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would like to kind of follow that rabbit hole and see where it goes. I mean, Todd Standing is a, he is a figure uh, in Bigfootery, whether you like him or not. Uh, I think that he's charged quite a bit of money to take people out to his area. And of course, he's gotten a lot of notoriety from his photos and his videos. So, uh, I mean, if this is in fact true, then definitely needs to come out and people just need to accept the fact that it's not, it's not real. Sorry, guys. All right, well, here's an interesting side note, um, and you, this will all tie back in together real nicely with a bow. Claudia Ackley, who's the woman that's filing the lawsuit against California because Sasquatch is in the derelict of duty to the fish and wildlife for not recognizing Sasquatch as a species. Mm-hmm. She filed jointly this lawsuit against California with Todd standing. Mm. That's part of the story that we don't know. Mm. And it was just a little bit of digging to find that, yes, he's part of this lawsuit. What, what would he have to so, do with California? Or she's just using him as a, some kind of a bolster because of his, <laughs> his name? Um, yes. Now look what's come up. Uh-oh, that's not good for mm-hmm. her and her lawsuit. Right. Uh, Jared Best. Right. Hi, Jared Best. How are you? Hello, Shannon. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, there is a how quite is the little group in here tonight. What's that, Jer? I said, how is everyone this evening? Excellent. Good. Excellent. Very good. I'm a little nauseated right now. I don't know why. So are we. Something, I mean, it's your voice, buddy. Something eureka. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's wafting this way. Mouth breathers. <laughs> Mary, Mary, you know, the oh, mouth breathers. <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Jara, we have, we have Sean, Sean Forker. We've got Vance. We've got Tim. We've got Jimmy. We've got Brian. Of course, Mary uh, in, in his house. So uh, welcome, everyone. This is so awesome. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting to hear Mary breathe heavy, but know. You know. <laughs> we're all just like. Let's have a moment of silence and wait for it. <laughs> and we'll wait. <laughs> I'm waiting been... for the right. I'm waiting for the right time. You'd have to. Yeah, I totally understand. Yeah, you got to pick That's your okay. moments. That's mm-hmm. okay. Uh, I I can I, I'll share a quick story and then I'll meet myself and let everybody else do their thing. How about, do. Is that all right? Yeah. Not that I'm looking to hog time. I'm not because Jared just got here and I want to hear what he has to say. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is. This is probably two minutes you'll never get back. So it was just (laughs) strange coincidence that happened yesterday. And I I was, I'm at work. I'm in my work vehicle. I'm driving a 20 mile straight shot headed towards the city of Chicago. And that 20 mile drive, I put the earbuds in and I put beyond the darkness on with Dave Schrader. Mm -hmm. And so I selected to listen to the Slender Man episode with Mm -hmm. Nick Redfern and about 15 minutes into the show, Nick and Dave are describing, well, the things about the slender man that makes it such a popular iconic being that it just blossomed with popularity and, and some of the aspects of it, of it being a tall figure 
in a suit. And the first image that popped in my head is, you know, I've seen Slender Man, but I'm waiting. And I no sooner was thinking really loudly in my head, when are they going to bring up Jack Skellington? Okay, because he was a tall, skinny figure and wore a suit. I no sooner had that thought go through my head and a pickup truck made a left turn into oncoming, not in my lane, but just to pass me. But he made a left turn to pass me. I swear to you, the driver of this pickup was wearing a black suit jacket with a white baseball cap with the Jack Skellington was the baseball cap, just the, the face. I'm like, what are the odds? What are the odds that I'm thinking, when are they going to bring up Jack Skellington? And there he is driving past me in a pickup truck. All right, there's your two minutes, and you won't get that back. I'm sorry. You always have <laughs> weird things happen to you while you're driving. Have you ever seen the twins? Like, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Anybody, it could have anybody just have shared that brief little moment with me would have been really epic, but no, it was just my own little personal experience. And I know coincidences happen to all of us. I get that. But I haven't seen Jack Skellington's image since the holidays. Okay, we're in the end of February. It, what were the odds that I'm thinking, wow, man, when are they going to bring up Jack Skellington? And here's this truck that turns and this dude is wearing the baseball cap. It's an all-way yeah. baseball cap with the eyes and the mouth on it. I'm like, it's Jack Skellington drive past me you're in a black like, suit jacket. You're really? Like, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking, yes. All right, so that's no, my I, that's a... I'll shut up now. I'll let everybody else tell their story. No, that's a... That's a good story. I just, I always think back to your twinsy bus driver time slip, double time slip thing. And I'm always yeah. thinking, you're still like, what in the hell was that? I have no clue. I don't um, know. I don't know. I brought it up a couple of times. But, you know, yeah. again, there's been a lot of uh, military helicopter activity in the area. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned this to Lon Strickler. Uh, because a couple of times with this Mothman thing, there's been military activity. There's been military activity with the Dogman thing. And there is no military bases around the city of Chicago. So they're coming in from somewhere for mm -hmm. whatever reason, which it happens. I get that. But I was laying in bed well, maybe a week ago, and I could hear the helicopter approaching. And within a blink of an eye, it went dead silent. I'm like, wait, mm. is this thing going to crash in my house or what? You know how they make that thud it landed, from the buddy. rotor blades. No, it didn't land. It, it was, you could roof. hear it approaching and then it just went dead silent. I'm mm. like, wait, what, n n what happened? It didn't fade away into the distance. It just went dead silent in a blink of an eye. I'm like, eh, what's the matter with me? I need another MRI, I guess. I don't know. Um, Speaking of, of coincidences, I was talking all day about how I wanted to uh, come home tonight, record with you guys, and then once we're done, I want to start the movie uh, The Ritual. And I, I noticed that, and we have Timothy Renner in the house with Strange Familiars podcast. And it, it, mm -hmm. Tim, you just made the post that, and I, I was just giggling myself when I when I hit like for it. Um, but you took a screenshot or a, a photo of trees in the woods, nice, creepy, you know, quintessential woods photo. And you're saying, uh, I'm reading it here. I thought perhaps I was in a York County version of the ritual, but I saw no runes nor gutted elks hanging in the trees. And I thought, oh, that's perfect because that's what I'm going to try to watch tonight. And it just it reminds me a lot of uh, another Blair Witch in a way. I don't know the exact premise of what's out there for those guys. Mm. I don't know if you've seen that yet, but um, I I watched it a few nights ago. Actually, is I've it something it, to yeah. avoid, or is are you recommending it? Well, I, I don't I don't necessarily think it's one to avoid. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I wasn't really sure what it was about going into it. Mm -hmm. I just kind of stumbled on it, but um, it was diff It was I think it was pretty original. That was one thing I, I took from it, and I had a few moments that were kind of tense. So I mean, it's, it's certainly worth a watch. It's always good I to have. Pretty, cool. I thought it was pretty. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I, did yeah. you? Yeah, and uh, and Andy Circus, uh, who who uh, played Gollum, he was one of the executive producers, and really? I thought they did a really great job with the effects. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Agree. Yeah, pretty pretty creepy. Mm. 
I loved it. Is that the on Netflix? It's pretty cool looking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Very original. Which we don't have a lot of that anymore. No, yeah, no. Guillermo del Toro kind of really changed the way modern monsters look. I mean, like his influence, I think, is, is mm. a vast in modern monster movies. So I joined yeah, the conversation late. What's that? I said I joined this conversation late. Who's this? It didn't pop up. Who might this be? Coventry, uh, Rhode Island. <laughs> That's so weird. My Oh, if it's Rhode Island, I think I have a little idea who that might be. Can you guys guess who might be well, in Rhode I'm Island? Dying. Give him a couple hints. The only one I know Wait. that's in Rhode Island Wait. is uh, Peter Griffin. Oh. <laughs> Not quite, but good try. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> if he called in, I think we'd be doing really, really well. I'm just saying. <laughs> I feel like, oh, we are in the Twilight up. Zone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Peter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, pay, really that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, can, you got, can you hear me all right? Yeah, give him a hint. Yes. Good. Give him a hint. Yeah. I think my 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 deep gruff voice should give it away now. What's the what's the <laughs> phrase that I I tell yeah, you I to will. watch? What's the phrase? What's the All phrase right, you have you to you snap hint. your I'll wrist? You I have I have I have holy water on my shelf. Oh, nice. Do you know who it is? I know Mary? it is. <laughs> who is it? It's John. You weren't supposed to tell them. Damn it! Yeah, it's it's our <laughs> resident oh. demonologist, John Paul Capice. Woohoo! He was just Ooh. exercising some demons Sorry. and thought he would drop in. Nope, I was taking a nap. I'm oh, come lie. on, dude. <laughs> Play along. I <laughs> was <laughs> right. setting my alarm, and then I was huh. like, I guess I fell asleep. <laughs> hmm. So, John, no. on a... Um, I, so I didn't want to interrupt, but I've no, for like, fine. you know, five minutes. You're good. You did it perfect. Thank Listening. you. I didn't scroll down, so I didn't see you pop in. And actually, Vance saw it before I did. So, um, on the Coast to Coast, uh, their newsletter, I get it usually every day. And I opened it. And they I, this is something that you had talked about last time you were on. But they were saying that um, the Vatican is ordering more, more exorcists. Yeah, like they're going to McDonald's. Mm. They're ordering more exorcists because they Ooh. are needed. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. How's that for We're drama? Well, they need it, but we'll never know. Well, yeah, we'll never hear about it. That's what you say, right? We'll never hear about the cases. Apparently not. I mean, unless there's, you know, more guys like, um, you know, what's his face in San Jose? Mm hmm. Well, what's Which I wish there were. What's going on with you? Everyone wants to know what's going on with the Fallen Ones podcast. So, do you have any updates for everybody? Yeah, I learned how to use my friggin' mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a lovely Yeti like no. the rest of us. I mean, it's so I'm on I'm on Instagram. I did that, which I didn't want to do, but I had to. And I, and I I think I'm getting myself set up. I'm trying to get 10 episodes, mm -hmm. like, in the bag, like, pocketed before I launch. Of the 10, I think I want to have at least six of them be interviews. I know there's going to be a few that, you know, I'm going to alternate between just me and interviews. <laughs> so... You know, I think right now it's just a matter about me learning how to use, and not necessarily the equipment, I mean, the editing tools and things like that. So, you know, once I get caught. You're breaking up a little bit there, John Paul. I'm sorry. Yeah, so you, you're just saying that, that, that thing, once you, you get kind of things rolling, you're going to get a little backlog going, which is smart to do, of a few episodes, and, and then you'll have the right, launch, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping to do. You know, I, so I get I get pretty shitty signal over here. Oh God, I'm swearing already. 
I'm going to get yelled at. John I mean, Paul's the first one minutes. out of all of us, including myself, to use a curse word. <laughs> Big high five. I love you for it. That was like, that was like a five, that was like a, that was like a five cent word in the box. Uh, <laughs> the guy let me off the hook. I promise I won't do it. I'd be so rich if I got paid every time I swore. Oh, man. We actually had a swear box when we were kids, and my oh, I really? learned it from my dad. So, did you contribute Blame the him. most to it? Or? I didn't. He did. He was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was a state worker, and he used to swear like a sailor. Well, if you work for the state, I I guess you could, I could see where you might be tempted to swear a little bit. He used to just come home pissed. I thought he was possessed. Honest to God. Yeah. Hear any, hear any good uh, demony stories lately, John Paul? I have actually. I actually, yeah, actually, this is a good one. You know, if if, if I come up copy at all one more time, let me know and I'll go outside because I don't have the best reception inside. Um, it's probably like thirty degrees over here. I don't know what is it like eighty where you are. Uh no. Smarty pants. It was like forty five. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Usually, though, oh yes. My. Usually, I can rub my no. weather in everybody's face, but yeah, no. There were snow flurries here today, actually. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I was. Um, I got. I think I, te- I might have even texted you this, but I I, I, um, I got in touch with this guy who um he used to do um tarot cards on um. Oh, oh my God, my mother. He's with a friend of my mother's, and he's been a he's a psychic medium for years. This guy, and uh, I think he lives up in Maine at this point in New Hampshire. And um, she hadn't talked to him in like fifteen, twenty years, and uh, she finally talked to him out of the blue. And she was like, "Oh my God!" You know, she just you know he asked about us and my brother and I, and um, she mentioned that I was doing this type of stuff and you know he immediately started going into like shadow figures and things like that and you know how he sees them daily and uh you know i and i totally forgot about this guy um he's quite he's quite an interesting guy he um he does not go to funerals like he does not go and i remember asking my mom that like why he doesn't go and Allegedly, like every time he goes, he sees the person who died mm. somewhere in the room, you know, looking at everybody else. And they're always pissed, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they're pissed. It's like the way they look or the way that people are receiving them in the line or what the, what's being said of them. Um, but I guess um, I guess he, you know, he sees shadow people on a right, like a daily basis. And... Um, you know, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't even think of this guy when I was thinking of people with the interview and things like that. So, you know, I'm really glad she, she hooked up uh, with him again. So I'm definitely going to call call him and, and see if he wants to come on and talk, do an interview. Um, I know he's he's part Native American. I don't know which which tribe. I, I assume it's the, uh, the Wampanoag, which is the New England tribe. Mm. Um, because he did our, uh, spirit animals, me and my brother, when we were kids, um, which was cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, he was just an overall cool guy. Um, so I, I, you know, that, that's new. Yeah. I can't I wait to see what happens positive. with that developing story and situation. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I don't want to, you know, grab I mean, there's a few people from your show that I would love to grab and talk to, um, you know, but I'll send requests to them personally. Other than that, like I have, you know, I have this guy that I'd like to talk to. I have, you know, a woman who saying, you know, too much. I have this woman who allegedly sees demons and so on on her daughter, on her daughter, like attached to her daughter. So I'd like to flesh that out in a pod, in a podcast. I have uh, my friend Corey, who is uh, going to come on and talk about the gin. Mm. Uh, he's a he's a Muslim, and um, yeah, which is I think going to be an interesting episode, considering 
that I don't know. I think people normally, or not, just non non Muslims, normally associate jinn with bad entities, and uh, which is entirely untrue. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just you know getting people, and 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 they they start getting excited, and you know they're calling me, and they're like, oh, in the podcast, when am I going to get a phone call? <laughs> yeah, I get oh. emails and messages uh, quite often. I told you not to put any pressure on you, but they're like, "When is the Fallen Ones pod coming out?" I'm like, "It's coming." I don't know exactly when, but it's coming. So yes. Well, it's funny because I put the Instagram account up like three days ago, and like it didn't explode or anything. But <laughs> you know, I'm not a big social but, media person at all. You know right, that, right? And, it takes time. Like I got 17 followers, and I was like, "Oh my god, wow!" I thought it wouldn't have <laughs> any. <laughs> um, I wish that Pam was on because I don't know if you listened to Pam's episode. I think it was on the one on the main show and not the one for you guys for insiders only where she was talking about how depending on the different levels that people were experiencing but she could see these black pitch black demony looking creatures actually attached to people's backs in various forms of being coalesced with the person um which is horrifying she oh, goes I could just be walking around a Walmart and see something like that I'm like oh my god Walmarts are bad enough without seeing that yeah, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take up the mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, yeah. I mean, even the living people alone, the people at Walmart are like, you're like, God, pull up your pants, woman. God bless America. Um, oh, well, well. People, yeah, right. People at Walmart. Yeah. Be a demon hanging. Yeah. Hanging on it's a whole back. other hashtag, man. Damn back demons. Demon in the <laughs> The old back <laughs> well, that's interesting. That's exactly what the woman reported, mm-hmm. but yeah. you know, but and that would be cool. I I, I would like to read those. And I I think I did listen to Pam's episode. I think you did too. But I was I, listening. Yeah, yeah. I think we we did discuss it, but I just when you mentioned that, um, it made me think of what Pam was has seen before, right. and what she always hopes she doesn't have you, to see again. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine once you see something mm-hmm. like that, you don't want to see it again. But did you get a chance to watch that Bridgewater Triangle documentary? No, I didn't yet. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll watch it. I know, I knew. Such a I creepy do. book. I do. Um, Portland, Oregon. Is that is that Jen? It is. Portland, Oregon? Hello, darling. I'm great. Hello. Hello, Poppy. How goes it? <laughs> Good. There's a there is a wonderful group in here tonight, Jen. Are you on through the computer or through your phone? Can you see the whole board? Vance is here. Um, no, I'm through my assisting. phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's um. <laughs> yeah, he was. He's been here <laughs> just being like, "Hey, so and so," and like, the "Damn it, I didn't even see them yet." Dropped. I was yeah. just being the ass. Uh, yeah, oh, you're all. fine. No, but <laughs> Jen, we've <laughs> we've got <laughs> Sean Forkchat Forker. We've got. Timothy Renner of Strange Familiars Pod, of course. We've got Jimmy, Brian, Mary, the the mouth breather, which we're still waiting for that. We've got Jared Best. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, of course, uh, John Paul Capice. So that's who we've nice. got in the house. Well, hello, everyone. Nice little partay. Hey, Hi. Jennifer, can I put you on the spot? Oh, oh no. Can I please? Oh, you need yeah. to share your story because it would be really oh. appropriate from what the, what we were just talking about if you tell your story. Okay. Only if because you're comfortable with it. Because I was on it. the phone with her when this happened. Okay. You'll have to and forgive I me, would, guys, too. I'm sick, okay. so. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I guess so. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, <laughs> no, so Vance and I were on the phone. I don't know when this was, like a week ago or so, yes. Vance. Yeah. And um, basically, I was sitting in the girls' room because I was cleaning it and everything, and they were out in the living room. And Anna was asleep. So um, there, was, there was just no way that it could have been anybody. So anyways, I was sitting in the in the bedroom, and we have a metal rack that goes over the bedroom door so that we can hang their backpacks on it. And so when you shut the door, it kind of gets stuck. It gets wedged in there. So it's kind of, you got to really push it open. And um, 
the door just flies open <laughs> and I just, I just sat there and, and was completely silent and it didn't, it felt, I just felt like there was something there staring at me and I got up, you know, and I went out to see where everybody was at and everybody was doing their own things. <laughs> and, um, so I'm just like, okay, well, whatever. I'll just try to, I'll just try to ignore it. But I couldn't shake this really evil feeling. Well, I ended up, I went into the kitchen and cause I've got a laundry closet in there. I put some laundry away and I shut the closet door and I went to walk out of it. And the laundry door dang near hit me. And so that sent me running back into the right into a different room in the house. And I said, I'm sure I sounded so pathetic on the phone with you. Oh my God. It was horrible. And so I go back into the girls' room and I really seriously feel like this makes me sound like a nutcase, but I was I on the phone with her this whole time. Okay, and I'm yeah. listening to what she's going through, and I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then I hear a growl. I'm not kidding. Uh-oh. Mm. And it wow. just, I don't know. I remember I was like, I like whimpered, and then I ran into a different room again, and I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what, you know, what's going on. And so I put Vance on hold. <laughs> and then I um, went and I got my sage and I, I did my thing, you know. But the weird thing was the way that I see stuff sometimes, it's like in your mind's eye kind of a thing, not not like physically with your eyes. And mm-hmm. it just looked like this black, tall mass with this kind of like a, like a school or animal type of a school. Mm. And I swear it was like laughing at me. So I don't know. Is this an isolated incident? I mean, it's first of all, it's terrible that you're in your own home and you're running from room to room. That just seems like it sucks really bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of, you kind of, it's, it's not good. Uh, but I mean, you've talked before on, on my show and on you guys' show about what you go through, mm-hmm. but are you feeling like this is a separate incident from the other things that you've experienced? Yeah, no, I don't feel like this is one of those uh, quote unquote regular hooded figures or <coughs> spirits or, or anything that I've encountered. This felt totally different. You and know, I'm sure if I never had anything laugh at me. Right. Maybe Vance created a tulpa. I think that it's Vance's fault. I don't know about you. But. <laughs> Thanks, Vance. <laughs> hey, I created I mean, Jack he was Skellington, on the phone. So it could be my yeah, fault. Really. Yeah, it could yeah, be my right? fault. <laughs> no, you know me. I'm you sorry. Know, I'm tr- always trying to make When she was talking but... to me, when, when she was talking to me, I heard her gasp. And I'm like, what's up? And I heard something. I didn't know what it was because, you know, there's ambient noise going on in the house anyway. And she's like, oh, the God. door, the girls, the door just flew open. Mm. And just with that description alone, I could tell the door flew open because she was absolutely flabbergasted. Right. If that's even, you know, an appropriate enough <laughs> word, I don't right. know. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then when she comes door. back and says, okay. Uh, the laundry door room, you know, the door in the laundry room just swung open and almost hit me. I'm like, what the hell is going on there? Oh, so <laughs> very creepy. I mean, okay. So- oh my God. And then the next morning, so I hadn't had any wood in my fireplace for, what did we figure out, Vance? It was like 10 or 12 days, right? It was 10 so- days. You had a fire in your fireplace 10 days prior and yeah. So the next morning, there's embers in my freaking fireplace. Oh, come on. Oh, oh <laughs> no, that gives me the chills. No, I, I believe you. It. It, just, it just gives me the chills. Wow. And then I've been sick ever since. 
like mm. all came down with something um, um like the very next day okay so this is but a question you some, oh yeah you went somewhere haunted right like a week before that or oh. a few weeks ago right? yeah but yes but the thing is that hotel I've gone there since I was 16. I stayed the the night there when I had prom, and I went there for my graduation, for when I had dinner, you know, with my family. And then, I mean, it's somewhere that I've gone. I mean, I'm 31 now. I was 16 then, so. Maybe Mary's why right, though. Maybe maybe you place. were in some kind of a weekend state, and you did, in fact, bring something home with you. I mean, if you're more stressed out than usual, yeah. or, I mean, I, I don't, who knows, but, um. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. You know, Jen brought up a really interesting point. Jen, you'll have to refresh my memory as to who, if you want to share who it was that said the word hereditary, that these things are hereditary. And I've never even oh. thought of that aspect before, that a lot of people would have these experiences because it's hereditary. What a unique aspect to take on that. Plus, Jen's sister is had issues what the day before that and you were a little hair raised Um, to begin with so it was a couple days before that um one of her stepdaughters was experiencing those black uh hooded figures in uh, her bedroom Hmm. jeez um so this is a question for the rest of the folks in the chat room you know if this was you what what would you guys be doing would you just get out the sage and try to for, forget it or would you be trying to I don't know contact it somehow or hop on a Ouija board or you know just ignore well, it What what's the what do you guys think I'm curious what kind of animal it. head I would, yeah. I, would, I would confront it I would say you're not allowed to behave this way and you need to I am love I am light you need to go we're, we have power in the earthly plane more, we're more powerful than them in this plane they're, they're, they only have the power that we allow them to have, and 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 what they what they feed off of is our fear, mm-hmm. and the more fear that we generate, the more power they have. But if mm-hmm. we don't give them that power, then they don't have it, and they have to obey our command. They have to. And if we if we, so if we will to power, you know, if we access that that strength within ourselves and if we know where we stand, but, but they delight in, in, in getting us off balance, you know, that's what they love to do. Mm. Yeah. Well, said because time. we're like play toys. Well, the one thing I would not, and, and I'm just saying that from per- personal experience anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Right. Who was that? The one thing I would not do. Who was that? Oh, oh, that was me, Jimmy. I would say I, I would not, bring a Ouija board into the equation if it wasn't already because, well, I wouldn't, but um, that just also stems from past experience. But um, I just think that, uh, you know, it, given any kind of communication with it, other than what he was saying, doing something like that to take, you know, a stand for your for your life and for your, your home and for everything, that's one thing. But, yeah, I wouldn't do anything through a board because I, I feel that's just, that would defeat the purpose of trying to rectify it Mm -hmm. you know it was kind of a double-edged sword um so to speak because i was telling jennifer pretty much the same thing i'm like what you have to do is you have to stand your ground and you have to tell it it needs to leave now but she had girls in the house young girls and she didn't want to upset them why is mom yelling for somebody to get out of the house Mm -hmm. and okay so what do you do you know, so I told her, I'm like, well, maybe you can close the bedroom door where you heard the growl and just speak in a low, monotone voice, but very stern. But I don't know. It's, yeah, it's instructive for I the tried. girls, though, too. It's instructive for the kids. Yeah, it's instructive for the kids. You know, that they need to know that they have power, too. They're more powerful than the things that visit them in the night. Mm-hmm. They have more power. There's There's too many little vulnerable kids. They're being Mm -hmm. frightened shitless by these horrible, horrible things, these Mm -hmm. entities that show up and have fun playing with little frightened children. And the Mm -hmm. children have power over them. Yeah. Right, right. That is definitely one thing that I've tried to teach them. 
That's important. I don't know. Just that <clears throat> other day was just a lot different. Yeah. Have you had well, anything I mean, since? It's easier said than done also no. when you're going through this. To, Absolutely. I mean, you know, in your head, that the right thing to do, you gotta, you gotta stand up to it, you gotta take control of it. But right. when you're going through mm-hmm. it, it's actually a lot easier said than done because initially, when it's happening, and you know, right. when you hear they, those sounds, and when you go through it, it, it they know it, your it's buttons. Hard not to have they that. know your buttons. That's for sure, man. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, but Jen, the secret, I no, think, I is knowing that 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 hmm? you 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 are so powerful, just who you are. And if we're convinced that we're not, and, and who, who knows? I mean, if, if we're eternal beings that have always been, and we just happen to be human right now, who knows what we were doing in another, I mean, I don't know if, I, this is just me talking. I don't expect anybody to believe what I'm saying. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this has served me well. This is from my own experience because I have confronted these things before and, and with success. Um, but there is there, who we are is pretty amazing and boundless and magnificent on a soul level. And it's way more powerful than we allow, you know, we we have the power to push that power down with our will, with our disbelief, with our lack of faith in ourselves, or we can, we can acknowledge we can, we can recognize who we are and who we are as love, who we are as light. And what we emanate is so bright and so powerful, so strong. And, 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 and that strength has no limit if we, if we believe that to be so. And, and so these other things that we encounter in the ethers and that are out there, and I, I hope I'm not getting carried away. I believe so strongly in this because I know from experience, from what I've experienced and with my own children, with my own, you know, with my own family. Anyway, I'll shut up now. No, that was well Someone said, Brian. In. No, that was, that was uh, great. Good. Thanks, yeah. John. <laughs> and if, if nobody recognizes Brian's voice, he's the one that confronted like the, the dog that wanted to basically just eat him alive and, you know, the <laughs> stories with the the two uh, big bullies getting, you know, the one guy getting tossed backwards, right, when it was like mortal danger. Um, so you do know from experience that these things, um, they, they do the happen. The slurping tentacle, yeah. Yeah, and the tentacle, yeah, the yep. terrifying tentacle through the ceiling oh, wow. in the house that you and your whole family were oh, God, house that sitting, right? Oh, freaked me uh, out. Yeah, n- yeah now you yeah. guys remember, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian's been through a lot of stuff, so he's he is definitely speaking from experience. Uh, I heard someone ask the question uh, in the background there at some point that, uh, Jen, what kind of animal head or skull was it? Could you make it out specifically? Um, kind of like deer like did you say deer like yes wow um timothy's well, in the house your thoughts. Tim, yeah um tim what do you what do you make uh, about that i mean i know that you know a lot about like you know the fae and kind of like the other side that maybe we can't really define that well does that ring any bells with you well um when I hear a deer-headed thing, I, I, I uh, immediately go to the Wendigo report mm-hmm. of uh, those creatures with, with deer mm-hmm. heads. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, the other thing is, like, you know, it sounds a little bit like poltergeist activity, which tends to come and go. I mean, there, there are certainly poltergeist activity that, that stays with people a long time and it becomes very hey, problematic. But uh, the, the other option may be to just ignore it and, and it will go away. Um, rather than engage it in any way. I, um, you know, it, 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 I think it probably depends on your personality and the way you approach things. But uh, I know like a, a lot of instances of poltergeist activity just, just come and go. People have it for, you know, four or five days and then, and then you know, not again or maybe not again. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting um, because about a month ago, I had my cupboard door fly open and then I had one of my... Um, felt like a Native American rattle on my wall and it flew off of my wall. 
what was it that was on the wall? But, I'm sorry. I missed, you know, I missed that more. part. What was it? Uh, it's like a Native American rattle. Oh, okay. Like a spirit rattle. Hmm. What, what is that used for? Okay. What, what, what's that used for in a ceremony? Um, for me, um, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's a ceremonial rattle, um, for specifics. I don't recall. She did tell me the story. Yeah. I just wondering if it's like, you know, if it's something specific, like summoning spirits or what, you know, they usually have a specific role. Mm -hmm. Right. During a ceremony, mm-hmm. so I'm just kind of wondering if there's any tie-in. It's probably a really big stretch, but I, that's why I was just kind of poking at that a little bit. Um, I don't know. That's, that's yeah. You know, there was a house. good point that was that was brought up about you could ignore it, and I told Jen you can do that too. You can just ignore it, turn your back to it, and try not to let it phase you. But mm-hmm. I've also read a lot of encounters with that same principle. When you ignore it, it ramps up because now you're right. yeah, really true. starting to mm-hmm. piss in its shoe mm-hmm. and it, the activity will ramp up even more, but it'll eventually give up and say, okay, apparently I do not have an effect on this soul mm-hmm. and I'll move on to a different victim or however you want to. You got to chase it away. You gotta <laughs> right. Chase it away. Yeah. You gotta chase so it I was away just, now. I was just doing some checking and, um, there is actually a demon called Furfur, F-U-R, F-U-R, who um, has the head of a stag. And, Furfur. It, and there's actually another one that has this, yeah, Furfur. And he's, um, I guess, the, and there's another one that has the shape of a horse. And they're both very similar. And in the way they act. And they both are harbingers of truth, believe it or not. Um, people conjure them when they want to learn the truth about something um i'm not saying that's what it was i'm just saying you know from my experience and my where i'm at you know that's what first pops into my head was further hmm. and there's the the thing also with um a lot of times the ear get uh used as uh, i'm getting the right. word that when uh, for alien abductions uh people will see beer like they see owls mm-hmm. um yeah beer is yeah. another owl mm-hmm. We'll see it yeah. with, uh, with and deer are also mm-hmm. yeah yeah deer are used for um, satanic worship as much as lamb or as much as birds are as well too so mm. you know um, I mean it's uh, up here in New England because there's there's so many of them um, I don't know if that's true uh, as much anywhere else but. screen memory that's the word I was looking for the, the, the deer are often screen memory for uh, mm. for aliens I think after all of us um, watching the movie The Fourth Kind, I think by now we're like, we're not buying the owls anymore, guys, so you're going to have to pick something else. So that yeah. still creeps me out. I'm like, mm, no owls. I That's love owls. Movie. They're wonderful. I love that movie. Yeah, but I'm like, if yeah. I see an owl outside the window, yeah. I'm like, well, guess I've been probed. I, no hypnosis for me. I already know what happened. <laughs> no shocker there. That movie legit freaked me up. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was well done. Yeah. She pulls away from the table the at the end. She's she's got you know, she's in a wheelchair. You're like, come on, oh my God. Yeah. Everyone bought yeah, that hook, line, and sinker. They did a great job. Everybody can hate on it, but I mean it was it was well done. Hey. I liked, I liked it. it. Yeah. Not you guys but hating on it, but other people do, you know, and I'm like, come on, just say it was good. It's okay to say something's good and you liked it. <laughs> People like to be negative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, the movie was the fourth kind, but this group here we're the special kind. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we're special. We ride on those Very freaky special. buses of yours with the twin bus drivers. Yep. Yeah, that's where <laughs> we ride, pal. <laughs> the short bus. Yeah. <laughs> Riding dirty in the short bus. <laughs> There's the heavy breathing. Oh, was that yeah. Mary breathing? Yeah. Wow. That wasn't Mouth me. Breathing. That was not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Mary. I don't know about that time. Mary's pulpa. Not Mary? Oh, <laughs> my. She really came through that on that one. scary. <laughs> the stag came through. Yeah. <laughs> 
Who's playing oh, with tarot man. cards on oh. the Ouija board while playing the light as a feather, stiff as a board? That's what I want to know. Oh, <laughs> so, How many in this group have a Ouija board? Mm. Raise your hands or say aye. How many? <laughs> Absolutely I've got not. I have one, but I, I don't use it. No, 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 no. I never owned one. I just messed with the one the one time, and that was it for me. Hey, Jimmy. I think that interesting. Uh, what episode was your, your Ouija? I get one, but... I keep forgetting the episode number. Thank you. Welcome to my world. Uh, a Ouija and <laughs> and the unintended guest, right? That was the episode name, though. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was it. Yep. So that's Jimmy's episode, if anybody wants to go back and listen to that. So uh, I love having you guys call in, you know, those that I know well and have spoken to before. And uh, it's nice to have everybody come full circle and be like, well, let me tell you, I've kind of already been there and here's why you should or should not do this. It's nice. Um, everyone has their mm -hmm. own strengths and things that they can kind of comment on, which is awesome. What, uh, anybody else have any little news bits before I ask my fellow podcasters what what's new in their world and what's coming up on on their uh, on their shows anybody else with some <laughs> interesting news that they found this month or, or strange stories I've got an out story I thought that was really cool oh, I'm sorry go ahead no you go <laughs> you, you got time for an owl story oh well yeah we were just talking about owls so that's perfect yeah all right so um do you know uh, Mike Cleland, the guy who wrote the Messenger's book? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking with Mike, and I'm, I was telling him about a certain kind of weird experience. And this is right after I read his book. I grew up on a farm, never had owls. Like, occasionally, maybe twice in my life, having grown up on a farm, I, I saw owls. Always kind of mourned it. Always wanted to see owls. Wanted, you know, I thought, like, hey, we have a barn. Why don't we have owls, you know? But uh, just didn't see them that much. Uh, maybe once or twice crossing the road in front of my car. But uh, I'm talking with Mike, and I'm telling him about this kind of weird thing that, that's going on in, in a certain area in the woods near me. And uh, his advice to me, instead of ignoring it, a lot of people are like, you know, run away, run away. Mike says, no, you need to pull the threads. You need to, you need to you know, get in and, and dig more. So a couple of days after talking with Mike, um, I'm going to this area and I'm walking through the woods and I said, he has, has this thing in his book where some woman said she could manifest owls at will. Basically, she, she thought about an owl, she could, she would see an owl that day. I thought, well, that's a neat idea, but you know, I don't, I don't want to manifest an owl. I collect like, uh, deer antlers and deer skulls, believe it or not. I'm talking about deer. So like, I'd like to manifest some antlers. So I'm thinking about this. I'm, you know, I'm putting it out there for the universe. Like it says, like universe, I want to manifest antlers and, this and that, and I come around the corner, uh, heading up to this, this, this area where this other weird stuff was going on, and, and we'll have to get into another time, and I see something white in the tree, and I look over, and I thought, well, this is, that's odd, what, what's that, I thought it was a bag or a piece of cloth or something, I walked up to it, it was the entire tail feather of a barn owl, completely white. Oh. Mm. Wow. Oh, mm. boy. So I, I, nice. Wow. Very cool. Right. Tried to manifest deer and got got owls, and uh, I, I think two days after that, two or three days after that, I was in the same area again. I was walking and uh, heard something in the trees, and a, and a different kind of owl flew out right in front of me. And here, here, I'd, you know, I'd seen like two in my life before that. What are the chances of that, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, it was very, very. But for Mike to be like, "Hey, you need to pull on these threads because they're going to lead you somewhere," and look what happens. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, and uh, actually, uh, there's another thing. I was in an antique store right before that happened, and there was all these, like, uh, somebody must have had an owl collection that they were selling. I was like, oh, that's strange. I just read the book. And, I'm, I, you know, I have no interest in starting an owl collection, but I picked one, one up. It was made out of wood. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And uh, turned it over, and on the back, there was a, a wizard carved on it. Um, so it, it was just this whole weird, like, thing. I was, I was working on the... Uh, my first big book was just all about wild men, and Merlin has, has a state where he's called a wild man, and kind of goes crazy. The life of Merlin, I, I read that story, and uh, here, I, you know, I pick up an owl, turn it over, and there's a there's a wizard, a Merlin looking guy on it. That, wow. that happened too with it, like that. I think that the day before, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. so all of a sudden, all these owls are coming into my life. I blame Mike. I think that's a fair <laughs> assumption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, you him. might want to start to manifest, you know, chests of gold or something. <laughs> you know? Right? I, mean, I wish. Right? Yeah. <laughs> gold, gold. Well, the thing is, I would, if I tried for gold, I'd get something else. You know, I wasn't mm. trying for Alice. I was trying for yeah. Alice. I got mm-hmm. Alice. So I'd have to find the equation. No, that's Pirates. Great. Yeah. There you go. T- Tim is overdue to come on <laughs> into the fray. Uh, what's the name of your Bigfoot book? Let's go ahead and plug that before we talk about your show. It's uh, well, Bigfoot in Pennsylvania was the first one, and Bigfoot West Coast Wildman just came out. There, those are all old historical articles uh, from old newspapers. Yes. Uh, so, what's up next for Strange Familiars? Oh, yeah. Do you guys have anything kind of upcoming that you know is on the books? Yeah, yeah. This, this week, uh, the Thursday's episode will be all about lights in the woods, and it's, mm. it's a lot of on-site footage you can hear. So, a friend of mine told us, you know, he was seeing lights in this one area. And we went up, and sure enough, you, you can hear the, the whole thing Like while we're there. It's pretty neat to see us, and we're describing them on site as we see them. Pretty, pretty mm-hmm. weird, uh, kind of unexplainable light. I will be tuning in for that one, because I had the, uh, I usually yeah. call it the unfortunate <laughs> event of being out for Sasquatchery and seeing lights in the woods, which, you know, when you're trying to be in one one camp, not that I balk at the other one, but I, at all, because, in fact, the longer I'm in this, the more I'm just like, who knows what's going on, really? I don't know what these things are. But right. when you're out there for one thing and you see another, you're like, oh, shit. Okay, that just threw a whole nother, <laughs> as a whole nother ingredient into the pot that I wasn't really prepared for. And your brain's just trying to go, well, okay. And then the thermal comes out and there's nothing on the thermal because it's not a person with a headlamp. And then you're like, really like, oh, so it's not a kid just screwing around in the woods like I was trying to tell myself. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I'll be tuning into that one. Uh, Sean and Vance, if you would please, the existence of strange things. Oh, sorry, Tim. Every Thursday, does uh, Strange Familiars come out every Thursday or every other Thursday? I do. Uh, the, the main uh, show is every other Thursday, and then in between I do like very short shows, just Strange Familiars to that. So there's something every week, but the, the main show is every other Thursday. Right. Perfect. Okay, cool. Thank you. And you can, of course, find that on all the usual social media outlets, right? All the usual stuff and or strangefamiliars.com. Awesome. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming on, by the way. Yeah, so, uh, Sean and, oh, yeah. and Vance, if you guys could please let everybody know about the existence of Strange Things. Yeah, you can uh-huh. the existence of Strange Things on Friday nights at 11 at the existence of strange things.com where else vans can they hear it well they can hear it in my headphones if they want to come over oh that was but, sassy uh, yeah you can you, you can you can no wants to yeah, sit in you your black box of death okay <laughs> with your my fake window i I've, I've officially Dang. named this the rectical because no. oh. it's not a cubicle oh it's that's <laughs> well. If that doesn't say everything, the rectical. Holy God, that's a new word. <laughs> yeah, listen. Show in my rectical. <laughs> <laughs> receptacle, rectical. I think awesome. Sean gets it. The rectical. <laughs> <He gets it. laughs> yeah, you can find uh, the existence of strange things if you go to radio dash memphis dot com, mm. and uh, of course we have an interactive Facebook group page called the Existers, and of course uh, everything's free. That's the beauty it's here; free. everything is free. We have uh, book giveaways and other giveaways. Uh, we, we haven't given away any children yet, sacrificial children, <laughs> but we're working on there's that. Still time. Just wait. Yeah, yeah there's, there's plenty of time. There's still time. <laughs> Who are and these? of course the existence of strange things. Uh, is also, well, along with Fork Chop Forker, is Lon Strickler and Butch Witowski, each bringing their own uh, specialty to the show. I just do the news. I'm the news guy. So you I've got to tiny it. little part of it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sean. That's, That's very great. nice. Of you. I enjoy yeah, Who are, who are these good. crazy then, people who do free shows every week? A free podcast? I mean, what kind of moron does that? Oh, we'll make you pay. Trust me. <laughs> One way or another. Way. Screen memories of what was the word? Receptacle, rectacle. What the hell was that? 
Rectical. Rectical. It's, it's not a cubicle, right? Oh. It's not a cubicle. It's, it's taller, so we that call is it the rectical. Effing terrifying. Oh my. <laughs> I have to write that down or I'm going to forget it. Everyone knows that's not a real window. You sent me a picture of a window with snow outside. I know that's a damn screen memory of somebody. I know there's yeah, like chains and torch devices in there. Yeah. Especially now you called a rectical. Are you freaking kidding me? Mm-hmm. Nobody go in there ever. No. Don't ever go in there. No. <laughs> well, seriously, that's how we keep people out. But you know. Oh, that's what I'm All doing right. wrong. I see that 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 Jennifer probably had to step out and yeah. take care of her girls because she's a good mom that way. Um, um, caravan of lore. Uh, I'll just yeah, no, go that ahead. one for her. Yeah, go ahead. But uh, caravanoflore.com. She's actually released a podcast tonight with uh, Tom Seawood. And this is different. He's not doing uh, the typical Bigfoot thing. He's doing some uh, Mm. Native American lore and personal ghost uh, stories that he hasn't shared with anybody else but Jennifer. So look forward to that. Sounds pretty chilling, actually. She was very excited about how that show came out. And then uh, probably either tonight or tomorrow, I'll have my review of the small town monsters, the Flatwood monsters. And it's just, it's only like a five minute presentation of what the movie review is. So you can look forward to that over at the caravan of And of course the interactive Facebook group page that everybody can jump in on, which is the caravan library of lore. And I know most of you jump over there and see Jennifer put up her tarot cards and do a reading every week. So thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. You're very that. welcome. And I just want everyone to know who's listening to this. <clears throat> uh, I am staying on top of John Paul. We're going to get the Fallen Ones podcast out to be amongst some of your favorites, <laughs> which are included this evening, right? Uh, so yeah, we're going to get here. that rolling. And so everybody can yeah, listen to I, that very this soon. Month. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get that rolling. Uh, I'm excited. I know you are too, I John pro- Paul. Well, I, yeah. So um, I promise that, you oh. know, this month it's going to get done. I, I promise. Yeah, I got it. Don't use the P word now. Once That's, I start, I'll be able you know, to. you never know. I did. I, know. I promised I last to, night, and now we had to do it tonight for this. So, you know, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, though. I did. I promise. I think I promised in January, but I exactly. mean, you're right. I mean, I, I, I got to do it this month because once I do it, I'm obligated to do it, you know? So I think once I do it, I'll feel the obligation and I'll, I'll have to, you know, it'll become more of my schedule once I, once I release it, because I mean, if I'm going to release an episode every week, I can't, I can't not be working on it and I'll, the pressure will make me work uh, harder. So, <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, it I really appreciate. does. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, and I, I, mean, I appreciate that. your help. I honestly, you helped me so much. It's not even funny. I mean, I wouldn't be able to, mm-hmm. you know, even get to where I'm at now without your help. And, um, you know, I know we got a little bit of help left to go. So I am your Las I Vegas you, pimp. I, I will always be here to help you, pimp you out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I am your. You, you, <laughs> Shannon, Shannon is my Las Vegas bitch, and I'm a pimp, and I am her bottom bitch. And that is the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone but wants to I hear your lovely voice proud. talking about nasty demons and <laughs> schooling us on things like named Furfur and all this other, you know, the guy with the owl guy with the glasses and the what the hell was that guy's name? Uh Stolis. Yes, yeah, Stolis, little badass. Uh yeah. another owl. Yeah, he's a there badass. You go. Um Yeah. So, yeah. Uh all demon. Tim, Timothy Renner, I know you're still there. I can see you there. I have to get you on here pretty soon. I know it's way long overdue, uh, but I would love to do that soon. So Yeah, any time. Yeah, thank you. Just let me know. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, any last words before we hop off here for Frayed February 18? Just thank you, Shannon. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Oh, well, thank you guys for being here. Can't do it without you, you guys. Rock. Um, Thank you, you for your constant you. support. <laughs> I can't do it without you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. And I love you guys. Aww. Mm-hmm.
well, now we're well, well, now well, we need the heavy breathing and the it's like awkward <laughs> silence. <You're> like, oh, <laughs> <God."> <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, oh god, I have to go like wash my hair right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't even smoke. I think I'm gonna need a cigarette after this. Oh, no, I'm really. I'm not going now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness me all right all right thank you guys so much for taking time out of your evening to uh to hop on and chitty chat yeah, you're well, thank you. all right till next month yeah baby until next Later. time goodbye well i'm so and so i was given this name by my parents i've been to such and such a college i've done these things in my profession i produce a little bar the buddha says forget it that's some of the story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. Well, nobody knows who that is. Because we don't uh, know ourselves except through listening to our echoes and consulting our memories. But then there's a real you, and that again leads us back to this question. Uh, who are you? That is the real you. We shall see how they play with this exam by the cohorts to get you to come out of your shell and find out who you really are.
when you settle down in the train to read your newspaper and uh, so on, you are not the same person who uh, a little while ago left the platform. If you think you are, you are linking your moments up in the chain. And this is what binds you to the wheel of birth and death. But when you know that every moment in which you are is the only moment, this comes into Zen, a master will say to somebody, oh, get up and walk across the room. And he comes back and he says, where are your footprints? They've gone. So where are you? Who are you? When we are asked who we are, we usually give a kind of recitation of a history. Straight, 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 straight.